And what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast. I'm joined tonight by Hitmaster. Hello, everyone. This is episode number 77 of the Talking NASCAR podcast, and it's the first one that I'm 21 for. But don't worry, I am completely sober. Oh, so my. I. I actually am, guys, or else I wouldn't be here. I'd be asleep over there. True. Also, Gary's hat is a premonition for a upcoming vlog that he will be in along with a couple other people including me. I'll be so there. That jersey. jersey will also be a part of it. Can't wait for that. Stay tuned for that. But anyways, we're going to do talk about the Talk Nashka podcast today. Um, we're going to talk about Kansas and the historical events that happened there. Um, it was a huge, huge week for Silly Season News as well. We're going to go over everything that happened. Um, and then, of course, uh, including a full throwback paint scheme preview because a few more have been announced. We're going to just go over all of them today in our preview of Darlington at the end. So, But before we do any of that... You might view uh, long-time viewers of the podcast, the none of you that exist. Um, <clears throat> I try drinks on this podcast sometimes. Um, you know, not the ones that, you know, the, the real, there's like three tiers of like new pop releases, right? There's the really crazy tier, the one that I make a full video about. Then there's like the crazy ones that I only do shorts of. And then there's the ones that aren't that crazy. I try here on the podcast. It's been a while since we've had a new one on that third tier, but we got one today, and it is Coconut Creamy Dr. Pepper. You do uh, you do test eating, right? Like you test weird flavors of like food as well? Sometimes. Or you just do pops? Oh. Sometimes. Not on the podcast. Not, I don't try food on the podcast, okay? Yeah. The only reason I try um, drinks is so that I can keep myself hydrated. I only asked that because I, like earlier today, my one of my parents uh, showed me a Fruit Loop Pop Tart. Oh boy! Or Applejack. That actually doesn't sound terrible. That was... Honestly, it doesn't. I didn't try it just because you know I didn't like Apple Jacks back then. I wasn't a big fan of Apple Jacks either, but I've come to respect them nowadays. Especially since they changed the, like, cinnamon guy. Right. All right, let's crack this sucker open. Let's see how the, uh, crack tape. Oh, that means it's going to be loud. good. It was really loud for some reason. If it's loud, it means it's going to be good. Let's sniff it. Get a good whiff. Okay, it doesn't smell that strong. There we go. <laughs> and he's going in for the drink. And the answer? It's good. Surprisingly. <laughs> it tastes mostly just like Dr. Pepper with a slight, slight coconut taste. Very slight. So basically like strawberry cream taste. Yeah, I also had that in the fridge, actually, funny enough. I'm surprised that I like it. I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. I really like that flavor, actually. I'm not a big coconut guy, but that one's good. So, anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about the podcast. Um, first, we'll talk about Kansas in the truck race, um, which I did not get to watch really that much, sadly. Um, There's a lot of close racing, though. Um, Honeycut, my boy, Honeycut. Great name. He had a strong day. Uh, it was pretty surprising. Ran in the top 10. Was contending for the lead at points, too. Um, but other than that, there wasn't anything super, super eventful. Corey Heim was able to pick up the win. Feels like his eighth win of the season, even though they probably haven't ran eight races in the truck series so far. Right. But, you know, I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, and then post-race, um, Christian Waters and Lane Riggs got into a post-race fight. And we always like to see the post-race fights. They never happen in Cup anymore, but they do happen in Xfinity and Trucks every now and then. We got one there. 
I couldn't figure out why the fight transpired, but it happened. So, there we go. And then the cup race. Oh boy, the cup race. Um, it was rain delayed by about, I want to say about three hours. Um, so that was good. Because otherwise I wasn't going to be able to watch it. And I actually got to watch like half of it. So that was good. Just like Michigan. Well, that got that got delayed more than three hours. It got well, it, no, well, it got delayed about three hours, and then I got delayed again for half a day, and then it got ran. Yeah. Who knows? Most likely, I'll do the same thing next year, or this coming up here. Um, first two stages though were caution free outside of the stage cautions, which is crazy. Um. There was no competition caution either, which I thought was a really interesting move on NASCAR's part. Usually they would throw competition caution for reasons like this, but they didn't. A oh, weird choice there. Uh, but the action picked up in the last stage. Many drivers got caught up in um, accidents um, throughout the third stage of the race. Spins, pig wrecks, you name it, it happened. Um, and many, many drivers were taken out or had their races affected Um uh, by um by it all um there was fuel mileage it was coming down to be a fuel mileage finish nothing new for kansas till about four laps to go when kyle bush spun to set up an overtime finish many drivers were set to run out of gas and so we're very happy that this um overtime finish um happened and it resulted folks in the closest finish in NASCAR history. You heard that right. Uh, Kyle Larson beat Chris Busher by a whopping .001 seconds. One one thousandth of a second. Last time that happened. Ricky Craven versus Kurt Busch. That beats that finish actually because it was two. That was two one thousandths of a second. This finish ties a tr finish in twenty sixteen in the Truck Series. I think it was between Casey Kane and somebody else. I don't remember. That Charlotte. That was one one thousandth of a second as well. And I think an Xfinity finish at Daytona was also that margin. Um, so now all three series have had. That margin, which is actually a pretty crazy now that you, gotta, you look at that from that kind of a perspective. But, I mean, unofficially, it's the closest finish in the Cup Series for sure, and also the closest finish really ever in NASCAR history. I thought Busher had it, and so Fox did too. Um, but Larson edged him out just by a bit. I couldn't even tell the difference. Um, it was that close. People but. were kind of upset on because how the start finish line is and all that um and i can get why those people are upset but uh why are they upset because of those if you look at the start finish line the start finish line is curved it ain't straight but like Bob Progress said, there's a um, camera at the far end of the pits that points where the start finish line is, and it showed that Kyle Larson won it. Interesting, interesting. But it doesn't matter about where the start finish line is, it's where that camera is. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um,. But no, I mean it was it was a little heartbreaking to see Busher's crew celebrate and then they realize they didn't win um, because Ford hasn't yet to go to victory lane this season and it looked like this was going to be their time. Busher had ran a really good race up to this point despite overcoming some issues with some debris uh, on his car and it looked like he had the win in the bag and Larson just came out of nowhere to steal it. Um, which is heartbreaking for Busher fans out there, but um, it is what it is. 
can't really uh can't really be too mad at it. I mean that they didn't really try to wreck each other and kind of just happened, you know, and this, this is what it is. So um, but that was an insane finish. I, I I could not believe my eyes when I when I saw that finish. But as for my fantasy, moving on. As for my fantasy, I took Christopher Bell this week. He ended up finishing sixth, I think. So not terrible. Um, but so that's really all I gotta say from Kansas, though. Um, good weekend of racing for sure. Um, Kansas has been going up in quality. And so that's a good thing to see. So hopefully that continues. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it all went down. So I don't know if you've so got So many close else. finishes this year. I know we had the Atlanta finish. That one was really close. We had this one. Ah, I mean, it was only a few weeks in, too. That's Who knows what's going to happen. If people are saying 2023 was the best year. You're wrong. 2024 is looking like the best year. So many close finishes. So many tight racing. So, right. Well, unless you've got anything else extra to add, Hitmaster. There's one more. Back with an update. There will be Rent cars coming to Corgan Oil. I don't think you heard me. I heard new cars. Sprint cars. Oh. Sprint cars. Which is odd because usually you see those in dirt. Not this time. Well, but yeah, other than that. Well, that's all we got to say then from Kansas. We can uh, put it in the books. Anyway, um, before we get to the throwback previews, uh, we got to go over some other stuff. Um, Eric Jones is going to be coming back to at Darlington. He was cleared to race at Kansas, but opted out of it for his own precautions. So he will, but he will definitely be back at Darlington after missing two races. So that's good to know. Um, JTG Dartery Racing also signed a multi-year extension with Recky Spinhouse. I don't know why, um, but you know, I guess it's probably because they couldn't find anybody better or sponsorship deals. Who knows? Uh, I'm sure that's not going to work out. Um, also, charter negotiations have been heating up uh, as of recently. And an interesting person has been getting in on the conversation, that being the uh, co-owner of 2311 Racing, Michael Jordan. A guy known for basketball operations wants to be getting involved with NASCAR talks. So you know... You know how that's going to work. Um, people, there's just a lot of uproar, a lot of upcry over a lot of this stuff. Uh, it's like, oh, it's going to kill NASCAR. Oh, it's going to do all this sort of stuff. And you know what? They have some truth to it. But also, you've got to remember that these are owners that are speaking for their pockets. So... You gotta take their their stuff with a little grain of salt, but honestly, it just gets more into like the economics of the sport. It's becoming really expensive. We talked about many episodes ago now about Sword Haas selling two of their charters, a prime cup team, a high level cup team, having to sell not one but two charters because they can't afford it anymore. That's pretty insane, and we're gonna see more of that um, as we go down going down the line so it's definitely going to um be much affected so that's something we have to keep looking out for i'm gonna take another swig here
Anyway. Got some other stuff here. Um, the, this is where the real big stuff comes down. Um, you know, it's, it's the the charter negotiations was kind of more of a warm up type tactic. Um, but so first big thing was Michael McDowell announcing that he is leaving Front Row Motorsports at the end of the season. He has been with Front Row Motorsports since. 2016, no. I believe so, yeah. It was 2015. He was with the 95. I no, only, Chris Buescher was still that. there. No, um... I only know that because I play NASCAR 15, and he's on the 95, and then you have David Reagan and David Dillon. With two cars. You know, Chris Buescher was in it. I think 2017 or 2018 he went to the 34. Maybe later than that. I don't remember. He's been there for a while, though. He's won two races with the team, the Daytona 500 and the um, Indy Road Course. Making the playoffs. and Could have won three. Could have won three. Almost won Talladega. Um, but this is big. And then later it was confirmed that he is going to the Spire 71 car. Huh? What? That is a significant downgrade. I thought he was going to go to the 7. That's a significant downgrade. What the fuck? Who thinks that that's a good idea to go down to the Spire 71? Okay. The only logical explanation for this is Front Row didn't want him back. Spire offered him a bigger contract or shit's really hitting the fan with Ford. So he goes to Chevy. Might be it. I don't know. It's all kind of speculations right now, but that could be any of those could be a possibility. So. Well, that was a huge news. I didn't expect that, to be honest with you. Not in a million years did I experience, expect that would be the biggest move so far. There were a few other pieces, too. Uh, Dale Jr. is... a. This was a huge thing a few weeks ago, but it's official now. Dale Jr. is, is uh, going to Amazon and also TNT for broadcasting. Uh, this will be, I think, in 2025. This will start. So... Um, that was rumored, and then Junior shut it down, and now it's official. Cleared the air. There we go. There is one more thing that Junior... That's going on with Junior. Um, I just looked at a thing before we started this. And, um... He doesn't like it that they go to Charlotte Roval. He wants it to go away. Don't we all? To be honest with you, if you're going to choose a track to go to, do the Daytona Roval. It's actually really cool. Go back to that. Yeah. Go to the Daytona 500 and then go to the Daytona Roval. Yeah, I don't know. The Roval stuff is... I don't know. They're probably going to phase away the Roval soon. And I don't know. They kind of, they tried it with Indy, and it really didn't work. They tried it with Daytona. It didn't really work. Charlotte, it kind of did work. That was, And it was also the first one. So I feel like that's kind of why they did it. Um, it was also the first time that someone went to the wall, a.k.a. Chase Elliott, and still won the race. This is true. This is true. Very true. Hey, Master, making great points right now. Just chase on. Of course, next to Dale Earnhardt and Richard Petty. And then 
the biggest piece of news. Well, I think the McDowell news was bigger, but this was the most recent. Saying goodbye. It was announced that um, Fox Race Hub, NASCAR Race Hub, is shutting down after June 11th. So that's when I believe Fox stops broadcasting races for the season. So that's when they're going to be shutting down. I couldn't really figure out why it's shutting down per se. However, another thing that kind of caught us off guard. I saw Ray, I I don't watch that much Race Hub. I only watch it for the radioactive stuff. That's another reason. That was one of their better stuff. And I thought they were okay. You know, I don't like, really watch a lot of these, like, weekly things. You know, the ESPN-style shows where they just talk about stuff for the week. You know, I don't really watch a lot of that anyways. But I thought Race Hub was still good. And it kind of sucks. It's going away. It really does suck. But <laughs> we salute you. Still like over about a month left at this point. So, I mean, it's not completely gone, but. Oh, well. That does suck, though. So. Anyway, on a lighter note. Let's talk about Darlington. Uh, I'm going to try and find all of the throwback die casts. So that means Kansas is now. True. It is. We can shut the book door on that. Now we can go to. Darn. All right, here we go. Um, My throwback paint scheme. time of the podcast. All right, so we got a lot of them here. This is the. All right, so we're starting with the cup series. We're just gonna. We've probably gone over a bunch of these, um, but we're gonna go over all of them. There's a bunch of new ones that have been announced. This is Ross Chastain's, and I fucking love it. Piece of beauty, right there. Austin Dillon, we already talked about this one, but there's Austin Dillon's. Pretty good. We already saw Josh Berry's. There it is again. If you uh, never seen it before, and it's a good one too. Right now, Kyle Larson's throwback. Terry Labonte, love it. Uh, oh, we can just scroll down. There's Brad Keselowski's. Corey LaJoy's, one of my favorites right there. Chase Elliott. Chase Briscoe. Who is that? Kaz Growla. <laughs> Martin Truex. Dumb throwback in my opinion. Because this was a throwback when he was in the 78 and then it became a primary paint scheme. Now he's throwing back to that. Just a really dumb way to throw back. Christopher Bell, Harrison Burton. Oh, that's a cool one. I like that one. William Byron. Beauty. My hand's getting tired. Hold on. We'll, we'll start with it. We'll go with it. We'll go right hand now. I am buying that die cast when it comes out. I don't care if fans are butts about it. This time I will buy it. Michael McDowell's last throwback scheme in the 34 is going to be two long John Silvers. That's pretty cool. There's Todd Gilliland. Ryan Priest. We're going back other hand now. Tyler Reddick. Looks very similar to his Talladega car. But, you know, there you go. I don't know if you guys seen this one, but, uh... Yeah, there's that one, too. Oh, John Hunter Nemechek. That one's not on the NASCAR website. Weird. And then, same thing with... Same thing with... Hmm. Anyway, there's Alex Bowman's. Gotta love that one, too. 71 card, that is. Zane Smith. Oh. Jimmy Johnson, one, Jeff 77, Carson Hosovar. And then Daniel Suarez. That's the last of the cup ones. Cool stuff there. We'll go to the Xfinity series. Okay, I like this one. 
This is a throwback to. This is the throwback to a defunct company as well as a paint scheme, Cole Custer. I'll have that one. Now, I don't remember these names. Patrick Emer Emerling. I like that one. That's a cool one. There's Justin Allgaier. I like that one too. No, ah, no, don't update Steam. Get out of here. All right. Sammy Smith. Brandon Jones. Another. This is a dumb throwback. I'm a Dale Jr. fan. But this is a dumb throwback. He ran this last year. Sheldon Creed. I do like this one. It's a cool one. Austin Hill. Oh, it's a throwback to a. Oh, like Bennett Transportation. That's pretty cool. Oh, they're doing another mellow yellow one. Leland Honeyman, let's go. Maybe they'll actually sell this one. Did it show Haley Deegan? Haven't gotten to that one yet. Uh, it might. Ryan Ellis. Kyle Petty throwback for Brennan Poole. I don't know who this is. Nah, Jeremy nah, Clemens. Shane Van Gisbergen. I'm assuming that's throwback. And Riley Herbst. Then we go to the truck ones. I don't know if it showed yet, but. Oh, that looks nice. That looks good. I like <clears throat> that one. Sadly, it's going to get wrecked, but that's okay. There's Nick Sanchez. Dean Thompson. Corey Heim. Dog one, in my opinion. Tanner Gray. Uh, Taylor Gray. Both the Grays are running. Once. Tyler Ankrum. Christian Ackes. Don't know who you are. Lane Riggs. Okay, that's a cool one. Real quick. Hey, real quick. That car is supposed to be RC. This one? Remember, I have that truck. I don't know what This one? This one is Bailey Curry. Daniel Dye. Thad Moffitt. I like this one. This is uh, Stuart Friesen. That's a cool one. Yeah, and the two Jimmy Johnson throwbacks. Jack Wood is the last one. That's all of them. Pretty cool stuff. I, mean, I cannot lie. The elbow stamp in nine. Well, that's all the paint schemes. Now we got to get to our picks. Uh, who do we think is going to win the truck race? All three are in action, if you couldn't tell because of the paint schemes, but... Real quick, just because this is... This week, for the cup at least, we won't even do it. Just because it's the robot, we we'll get to pick our own. But, anyways... Pick out the number 38. I expected you to say that one. It's pretty good. I'm going to go with the Mellow Yellow. Wait, no, the Mellow Yellow throwback is in the Xfinity series. Crap. Um, I'll go with uh, the guy running the Jimmy Johnson throwback. I don't remember his name. That's a good one. I like the paint scheme. Speedy. 
Okay, for Xfinity, I gotta pick the Mellow Yellow car. Okay. Kyle Larson did a Mellow Yellow Kyle Petty throwback in 2015. Arguably, to in my opinion, still the best throwback paint scheme that's ever been ran. And that was year one. They did not make die casts of it. And I am pissed because I would have bought one. It had the Mellow Yellow logo. It was to the T. Nope. Fuck you, Coca-Cola. Fuck you. Anyway. I choose Haley Deegan. Driving that number 15 Dale Earnhardt car. You would have picked her. You would have picked her regardless of the paint scheme she was running. No, I wouldn't have. No. To be honest with you. I'm also running. He's not good at all. I'm also rooting for Brennan Poole. I like his Hot Wheels paint uh, throwback. Another Kyle Petty throwback, mind you. Kyle Petty ran some cool looking cars back in the day. I got to admit. For the cuff, we can choose our own. <sighs> I choose William Byron. Not surprised. <laughs> Not surprised. Who am I going to pick, though, is the question. I love that fucking car. I'm going to pick Chase Elliott to win just because I like the throwback. And it's Chase Elliott. So. I oh, I was going to... I don't know why I thought Alex Bowman was still driving the 88. <laughs> idiot, idiot, idiot. Come on, Gary. Come on. Get your head in the game here. Literally. Um, I don't want to. Yeah. Darlington should be good, though. It's a grueling track full of, um, you know, tire strategy and just, you know, surviving to the end. I'm going to get some Darlington stripes. And so it should be good. Uh, it should be a good weekend of racing, hopefully. Um, and the paint scheme should shine bright in the night or the day, depending on the weather. Who knows? So. That's really all we had for this week's episode of the Talking NASCAR podcast. Um, if you want to be a guest on a, the Talking NASCAR podcast, all you got to do is join the Pringle Sun and Company Discord. Link in the description down below. Request the Talking NASCAR role, and um, we will figure out a time for you to come on and talk some NASCAR. So it should be pretty good. Anyways, stay tuned for other much more amazing content. Till then, from both me and Hitmaster, remember that vlog is coming. And uh, what are your guys' thoughts on the new Dr. Pepper? Love to know as well in the comments section down below. That's going to do it for this video as well, so stay tuned. Much more amazing content. Till next time. See you guys later. Goodbye.